What's up everyone, it's Caddy with MoneyVest. So this is gonna be our ongoing series where we discuss and break down um, psychology and educational videos when it comes to investing, right? So we're really gonna start focusing on these ideas. I've been doing videos on these types of topics for a few weeks now, and I've, we've already covered style drift. We've talked about uh, you know investing success long-term, longevity, defensive investing, and a lot of different types of topics that are covered in many books that we're reading together on finance, investing, and trading, and learning from some of the greatest investors of, all, of our times. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about another topic related to patience. And patience, in my opinion, seems to be very, very underrated when it comes to investing because you know, when we're first getting started with investing, a lot of us want to make money quick because that's what we've been told. And if you are a beginner watching this video, that is something that you might be going through as well, right? You might be getting into the markets, you might be investing for the first time, and you're like, I wanna make quick profits, I wanna have that validation that this is something that I can do. Um, and of course, you might be day trading, you might be swing trading, you might be investing, but the but the uh, that, that spiral is that you wanna make money quick, right? And oftentimes, when you are rushing into things, that never ends up well. And that's exactly what I'm here to talk about. And I'm gonna break down a very specific chapter from that book, The Most Important Thing, and also break down some shareholder letters from Warren Buffett from 1999, 1980s, where he, where he talks about uh, you know, waiting for the best deals and why patience is a very, very secret and key ingredient of long-term investing success. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Find it helpful if you do. Make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Link to our Discord and Patreon is gonna be down below if you're interested in joining. Uh, and of course, getting access to all the members-only private videos, finds alerts, everything's gonna be included. The first week of the month is the best time to join. And of course, we do have the fundamental and technical analysis courses, the option scores, 50 to 60% off, coupon code LABOR4, and that's only available till Monday. So again, links are gonna be down below. So this right here is going to be my notes from that book where Howard Marks has a specific chapter dedicated to patient opportunism, right? And he says, be patient, let the price come to you. Something that we have talked about on the channel, uh, you know, time and time again. I mean, for as long as I've been creating content, I, I've been talking about let the price come to you and don't go after chasing something that's moving, that might be trading on momentum, that might be pushing higher. Don't chase, let the price come to you, right? You're not pursuing, you're attracting, right? That's the whole idea. And Howard Mark says, you'll do better if you wait for investments to come to you rather than going after chasing them. At Oak Tree, so that's the Oak Tree Capital, that's what Howard Marks basically runs. And I love this line from the book. He says, we don't look for our investments, they find us. Okay, and what he means by that is because of course Oak Tree Capital is such a big fund, um, and of course Howard Marks is known very widely in his in his field. So, what he might what he means by they find us is that when the phone rings, right, and there is a pressured seller, there is a motivated seller. Well, guess what? You're gonna get really good deals, right? Think about it, right? If there is a house on sale on your street and you've been looking for a house on a specific area. And there is a very motivated seller, right? Because they're getting foreclosed or they're moving or whatever it is that there's this happening in their lives. And they're very motivated to sell to you. Guess what? You're gonna be able to demand your terms. You're going to be able to demand a huge discount. And that's what, that's what that means, let the price come to you. You're not trying to find something, let it come to you, let it find you. Now that gets a little bit more philosophical, but of course in the investing world, we have to constantly be on the lookout. We have to still be able to find opportunities and look for where there are discounts, right? By, you know, Oak Tree Capital, Howard Marks, yes, it's a little bit more philosophical, but the idea is very good that you're not really chasing, you're attracting, right? You're allowing for the opportunities to find you. And he says, be patient with your investments and trades, and there is nothing special about buying when prices aren't low, right? So what he means by that, that there's nothing special, right? Everyone can really buy when the prices are going higher, right? Everyone can execute and everyone can take advantage of when the prices are higher, so there's nothing special about that. What is special is buying when prices are low, right? When prices are trading at a discount, when prices are undervalued, that's where the specialty comes in. And he says, there's no need to rush, there's no need to force trades or investments, let the right ideas come to you, be patient and strike only when you see the right opportunity. Um, and this right here is you know, from, from Oracle of Omaha, so of course from Warren Buffett himself from 1999 Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting. And he says, wait for the best deals. He says, in 1969 period, when I closed up 
A, I had somewhat similar situation in terms of finding things and B, I really felt that the expectations of people had been so raised by the experience we'd had over the previous 13 years that it made me very uncomfortable. And I felt unable to dampen those expectations and I really just didn't find it comfortable to operate where my partners, even though they might nod their heads understandingly and say that, you know, we really know why you aren't making money while everybody else is. I didn't think I wanted to face the internal pressure that would come from that. I don't feel any such internal pressure in running Berkshire. And what he's talking about is that when you're running a fund, right? And you're getting pressure from other people. Hey, why aren't you making money? Why aren't you making moves, right? Why aren't you actually investing when other people are investing, other people are making money is that's the internal pressure that Warren Buffett used to face, right? That's the pressure that anyone can face if they are having to answer to somebody else or they're managing somebody else's money. Um, and that happens only because Warren Buffett was looking for the right opportunity, not every opportunity, but for the right opportunities. And because he was patient, he wasn't making a lot of moves. He was waiting for the right deals. He was waiting for the best deals. And that's an important lesson to be learned here about the benefits of private capital and being able to wait on the sidelines for the right opportunity rather than having to chase the market higher. And Buffett went on to run Berkshire, which gave him more flexibility in terms of stocks and that he could buy and when he could buy them. And I think a lot of people need to understand that, right? You are in charge. You are in charge of your portfolio. You are in charge of your money and your capital. You don't have to answer to anyone, right? You don't have to answer to partners or fund managers. Maybe yes, you have some obligation to your family, your significant other, your parents or whoever it is that you are looking after and you are building that portfolio, your generational wealth and you're accumulating your investment portfolio so that you can take care of your family. But there's no specific person that you are literally answering to. There's no quarterly reports. There's no reports that you're generating and presenting it to anyone and answering why you made those moves. So you don't have that internal pressure. We don't have that pressure. So we can be more patient. We can be relaxed. We can be more flexible in our investing style that Warren Buffett didn't have when he wasn't running Berkshire. And he says, um, you know, but whatever, whatever structure you're operating, the key is to remain nimble at all times. And of course, keep a lot of cash on hand to take advantage of opportunities when they present themselves. And I think that's also a very, very underrated sort of idea is having cash on the sidelines. And that's one thing that Warren Buffett literally promised to his investors is that I will always have enough cash available for the right opportunities. He will never over leverage himself. And I think psychology of money talks about this very well because all these years we learn about what Warren Buffett did do to become successful, but we are never told what he did not do in order to be successful, right? In the last 50 years, we're told that, yes, he's looking for undervalued stocks. We're told that, yes, he's looking at discounted cash flow models and buying undervalued companies and being patient and all those things. But the things that he did not do is that he didn't over leverage himself with the debt. He did not burn through all the cash that's sitting on the sidelines on all the opportunities that presented themselves, right? He was only looking for the right opportunities. And you know, he did not sacrifice his uh, reputation or did not compromise the philosophy of the fund and, and Berkshire Hathaway, like all those things he did not do in order to be successful. And I think that's really important lessons there that we need to kind of take away from it and understand that these are again, timeless lessons, right? He says, but you know, that's part of the game. I mean, it stayed cheap a long time from the 73 period on and you will find waves of optimism and pessimism and they'll never be exactly like they were before, but they will come in some form or another. And that does not mean we're sitting around with a bunch of cash because we expect stocks to go down though we keep looking for things. We're looking for the things right now. We're talking to people right now about things where we could expend substantial sums of money, but it's much more difficult in this period. And sometimes it will be difficult, right? Not every market condition is going to warrant same amount of decision-making, right? Like I said, if stocks are overvalued and markets really frothy, you may make fewer moves. You may not make a lot of moves. You may not be buying a lot and that's okay right? A lot of times traders and investors get into this idea that I need to constantly be making a move. I need to constantly be trading, right? That's not true. In fact, quite the opposite. If you trade fewer times, you actually might end up being more profitable than if you are trading a lot. And I've had this experience with myself as well, because when I was over trading, my profits were less. If I'm making less trades, my profits are more because I'm making fewer trades, but higher quality trades and higher quality decisions. So, there are going to be market cycles. There's going to be situations where you're making a lot of moves and some market conditions where you're making fewer moves, 
but that's just part of the game, right? So you have to be accepting of the fact that it is what it is. That's how things work. And not every market condition warrants a lot of decision making. Sometimes you can just sit back, relax, let the market do its thing. You don't have to make a lot of moves. You don't have to make a lot of decisions. And then other times you have to be more proactive. You have to be taking advantage of those opportunities. You have to act on your conviction, execute. And then again, it's the market cycle that goes on and on. But bottom line is patience is what win wins long term. And that's not just with investing, but with a lot of things in life, the good things that come to you in life come with patience. Okay. So hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful. If you did, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Link to our Discord Patreon is going to be down below. Uh, and again, we'd love to have you on board. And of course, our fundamental tech analysis courses uh, are going to be 50 to 60% off coupon code LABOR4. As always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.